Hello. We're here at the Wonderland Rhododendron Garden because we're going to drink in Jinki 53, which is the gentle wind or the gentle wood spiraling on top of a keeping still mountain, rooted in this deep appreciation of stillness in the moment. Jinki 53 moves from the shadow of immaturity to the gift of expansion and the city of superabundance, beyond abundance. And in the I Ching, it's this combination of the gentle wind energy, this yin wood, this growing soft gentle wood, and the deep yang earth, this mountain of stability, appreciation that we've been exploring over these last few weeks. And I love this progression of the elements as we receive different connections with the other eight elements, all from this thesis of the mountain, rooted in appreciation, rooted in the stillness, rooted in this moment, the gift of restraint. And now it's the gift of restraint in combination with the, the gentle winds, the whispering winds of intuition. Expansion is an incredible feeling as we move out into the world as our, our art or our magic or our beauty or our abundance or our, our gift and service to the world that begins to expand. And I love the, the message of this Taoist alchemy is in order to expand, we must have intuitive restraint. And as I've been exploring this hexagram, it's all about development, gradual progress. That the movement, the intention, the, the, the wood as it grows out into the world, the wind as it spreads our messages out to the world, it comes from this restraint, this pause back to the center, back to the belly. And immaturity as a shadow is unease and stress. Right? This uneasy feeling that we have when stress is occurring. Because immaturity, it falls victim to restlessness. You gotta keep moving, you know. No matter, even if it's wrong, even if it's uh, immature, even if it's rash, even if it's just not on target, we still keep loading those broken arrows into the bow. You know, that definition of insanity, of doing the same thing over and over again, trying to expect different results. So this restless energy, it, it causes us to, it, 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 it challenges us because it wants to act without that pause. It wants to start something out of fear. You know, fear of not missing the moment, fear of, of not having enough money, so we push out our agenda too quickly fear of other people controlling you and so we 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 bolden ourselves but it, it comes from this weaker foundation and the wisdom of expansion in this in this bagua poetry intuitive restraint intuitive restraint listening to our intuition that the changing winds are bringing us information for each step and what we need to do is pause and root into our belly into our body and act from that place I've been exploring this concept of sovereignty and I feel like the mountain is a profound gift of sovereignty, of being unaffected by the winds of reality as they roll across the, the thick mountain. I mean, over time, the gentle wind is penetrating. It's a subtle and penetrating influence of spirit and it weathers away even the hardest of rock, but it takes time. It's in cycles. And the rock, the, the keeping still mountain, stays steady amidst these cycles, stays present, rooted in appreciation of this moment as it unfolds. And then listening to the wind as it dances through these trees, these rhododendrons, listening what it's bringing, what messages it wants to share. So that ability to pause into your sovereignty, to not need anything from anyone or to not be victim from anything outside of oneself. Right? Because if I'm victim to other people's timing or expectations or I'm afraid, then I act out of that restlessness, the immaturity responds. But if I root in my sovereignty and appreciate this moment exactly as it is, then I hear more the subtleties 
as they teach me where to move next. And that mountain wants to put that energy of mo into motion, but it comes from this effortless motion, it comes from this effortless yang that, it, that emerges from balance. And so superabundance, moving beyond even the idea of material abundance, but really the spreading, the pollinating of that gentle wind across all the mountain ranges. Superabundance is the clarity of stillness. To receive the brilliant song of life, lucidity from that ability to sit with the discomforts of what is until our charge dissolves. And we can actually dance with these spirals that life is showing us. I've been contemplating this key because it's a key of cycles. It's very prominent in my chart. It's my evolution and it's one of my primary channels down in, in the human design. And it's this energy of cycles, of ending and completing cycles, of the endless beginnings of cycles. And here I am at a really big threshold in my life. And some cycles are coming to their completion while they evolve beyond me. And then new exciting seeds are just breaking ground and asking my attention to water and follow these spiraling, this gentle wood as it emerges from the moment. That's how this project was started, was this deep listening to the elements of life. And suddenly we were moving into the, the era of mountain for six and a half weeks and it was like, yes, this is time. It's time for me to engage on a, on a real body level. It's brought back my Qigong of the Bagua, you know, the mountain and, and moving with my body and it's been bringing all these insights, these, in, these intuitive little clues have been showing up at my doorstep of Chine Song and, and different practice, like literally sitting here in the hexagram of the Keeping Still Mountain and the spiraling wood. It's been amazing because it takes something that can be so heady and complex and brings it right here into balance, into, into the present moment. Because I've also been facing a lot of challenge and growth. You know, it's my evolution spirit. It churns me. It brings me into expansion by including contraction. You know, contraction is a natural part, that intuitive restraint. I love that feeling, how the mountain brings me into my belly. That in order to expand, rooted, I have to come from that center place. And my greedier influences, right? This is the programming partner to greed. My greedier influences say I need materials, I need attention, I need energy, I need all this outside force in order to find my center. But sovereignty finds its center first and then knows intuitively the next step to follow for our service to go out to the world, for our life to thrive, for our relationships and our work to be at their magical heights, the expansion of what is possible beyond our conceived limitations. That's the energy that's constantly birthing new cosmos by restraining and listening. 